Hey folks, this is Mike Thalfson from the Microsoft Education team and sorry about the delay. We've been having some fun technical issues going on behind the scenes that we hope to resolve very soon. But for our daily webinar today, Remote Learning with Microsoft EDU. I work on the Microsoft Education team and we are here to talk about lots of good stuff in the world of remote learning. So our agenda today, we're going to talk first about the latest news and updates. And then we've got special guests Holly Clark and Matt Miller to talk about the new partnership with Microsoft EDU. And we're pretty sure Holly Clark's going to join us, but uh, behind the scenes, we're trying to desperately get her into uh, the show really quick, but Matt is here for sure. So just to review our quick links that we always talk about, the Microsoft EDU remote learning site, that's a great one that has the high level overview of everything we're doing. There's the Teams for EDU Quick Start Guide. And that's a great, it's a PDF, it's digital, it can be printed, but it's really nice for the quick start, get up and running. We also have meeting content that's been updated. So a lot of people in the world are trying to figure out Teams meetings and best practices and attendees and who can mute who, all that good stuff. It's all part of this Teams Education Quick Start Guide which is also now in multiple languages. So if you click that link, depending on your language, it'll download the right PDF for you. And then also there's the remote learning community. So this webinar initially started in the remote learning community, and that is the global community that any educator in the world can join. And hopefully there's many of you out there that are already part of this. We have educators from many countries around the world, from all over the United States who are collaborating together in the community sharing best practices. We also have Microsoft engineers and product team members like myself and many of the people on this call in that community to help out and get people going, sharing best practices. And so we encourage everyone to join the community. Now in terms of today's updates, this is the daily sort of three top links of, of stuff we like to talk about one, we're going to be talking a lot more about this new online learning ideas site that Matt Miller and Holly Clark have put together and partnered on. And so that is something we'll be talking about quite a bit. I also want to reiterate this incredible list of links that Mary Lyon put together, and she's one of the producers on this show, and she runs the MS EDU Central Twitter channel. And she's put together a great list of all these different aka.ms links. There's all these resources and links. There's a beautifully curated list. I actually have a screenshot of it on the next, the next screen. So be sure to bookmark that one because there's a ton of good stuff. It's one of those that you'll want to bookmark for sure. And then lastly, Holly Clark's Elevate Publishing Company, amongst her many MI expert friends and Holly, they just put out a brand new book called the Microsoft Infused Classroom. Highly recommended. I just got a copy myself. Lots of really great information on cool pedagogical ideas, innovative things you can do in the classroom with technology. And this one focuses on some of the Microsoft tools that we have that can allow people to, to really take advantage of the free things out there and do really cool new ideas, especially in the world of remote learning. I think this book is gonna be more helpful. Hey, I almost sounded like Holly. That's a good thing. So this is a screenshot of the frequent links. So the this nice curated list that Marilyn put together. Lots of good stuff in here and, and it's going to have tabs on it so you can sort. And so this is like the, the master link list, one, one link list to rule them all. And, and so highly recommend you bookmark that site. And with that, and uh, someone will have to let me know if, if Holly's in here or not. I hope she is. But we've got Holly Clark and Matt Miller, dynamic duo, and I'm going to be interviewing the both of them. And we're going to have uh, either Matt or Holly will be on screen. I'm going to be off screen, but I'll be the one asking them some of the questions. They're going to be sharing their screen and showing some of the cool stuff that they're doing. So I'm going to stop presenting here. And let's see, Matt, we ready to go? Holly, you here too? Yep, I'm absolutely ready to go. And Holly is too? I didn't hear uh, Holly. Oh, wait, wait can, you, can you hear me now? 
Yes! Yeah. We did it! We did it! Good job, everybody. Okay, so Matt and Holly, tell us all about your new online learning ideas site and what should educators expect? Maybe you can give us a little tour. Like, tell us all about it. So I'm gonna. All let right. Me yep, I will be glad to to kick this off. So um, Holly and I have put together this site called OnlineLearningIdeas.com, and you know one of the things that we started to see as there were more and more school closures, um, more and more uh, educators started going out on social media, and um, you know just searching out ideas, uh, trying to sort of make sense of the school closures and of online learning and what was happening. And Holly and I started to notice that, you know, especially on social media, there was a lot of buzz, which is great. And which is very common of us as educators. We love to help each other. And so there were all sorts of tweets and all sorts of links being shared and everything. And um, although it was very helpful, it was also very overwhelming. And um, for those that were connected on social media, this was kind of a nice thing if you were able to sort through all of it. But for those that weren't on social media, it was also sort of a bummer because there was no good central place that we found anyway that was pulling in a lot of these really good ideas. And so we thought, well, hey, what if we created something like that? And so we created um, online learning ideas to be kind of like a curation, a place where we could pull in lots of the things that we were sharing, but also what other people were sharing too, and sort of organize them around several different um, topics, you know, things like video and assessment and relationships and all of that. And so that's basically what we've created. Um, it's a site that we're updating on a daily basis. There are new ideas on there every day from me, from Holly, from other people that are sharing things. And we're basically using it as a hub to link out to other people's work. Um, and Holly, this was something that, um, that seemed to be a really good fit for what we believe in education, but also what we found Microsoft to believe in education too, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And we really wanted it to be around pedagogy and what really uh, makes for powerful teaching and learning. And we found that Microsoft had the same goal. So this is what we're doing as we are populating it. We're looking at a big idea for the week. So this week is assessment and we had some work around um, what does assessment look like online? And then tomorrow we have a live interview with Kyle Wagner out of Hong Kong who does project-based learning. He's like well known for it. So we're looking at how do we do the project-based learning at home? And so that is the kind of thing that we're doing on this site with the big idea. So next week our big idea is going to be around demonstrations of learning and what does that mean when you're at home and, and we're really trying to rethink we're calling it ditch the packet <laughs> um so that so that teachers aren't going and scrambling to make packets and wondering how they can get them to students and then we are the next week going to be talking about equity and so we have all of these big ideas that we're focusing on and then we're curating resources around sel around um other things that are really important to educators and we're super passionate about it like we we both have we're talking today that we're staying up way later than we thought <laughs> because we're up late finding stuff and having conversations with educators and for us it's all about pedagogy and good teaching and learning So Matt, so, I, you guys want to share like I think Matt was going to maybe show what this site looked like and give us a little tour. Yes, absolutely. That's the that's the plan. So let me go ahead and take you over there real quick and I'll show you what um, what we've got. So this is what the the front page of the website looks like. Um, you can go to onlinelearningideas.com and the the main page is going to look something like this. And, you know, as you scroll down just a little bit, you can see that here are a bunch of the different, um, you know, a bunch of the different parts of the website. And so let me make this one graphic just a little bit bigger. This is what you'll find basically um, at the website is that we're pulling together blog posts, infographics, videos, and live streams. Um, some that Holly and I are creating, some that others are creating. And it's all about assessment relationships, video, um, activities that you can have your students do and so on and so forth. And so 
basically up at the top, you'll notice that you know this is updated on a regular basis. In fact, I'm ver we're very transparent about when we update and what we're updating. So if you show up, you'll be able to see where the newest content is. And then under the categories drop down, and this is sort of constantly changing. Um, this is this is where you can find all of the all of the content. So if we click on any one of these tabs, it's going to take you to a section on video, on assessment, on relationships, on activities, and on our weekly big ideas. And so, um, Holly, we've got we've got a bunch of stuff that we can share related to the website, like um, some of the most popular things that that people have been checking out. Is there one in particular that you wanted to talk about? So I really yesterday when we were doing assessments, I did a uh, remote superpower post on what are the eight things you should really, really focus in as you're learning about remote learning. And so I did eight things, Teams being one of them. And this has gotten uh, the, my probably my biggest daily hit on my blog um, maybe ever. And uh, so I this one is, is really um, what teachers need. Also yesterday, our live um, video that we did around assessment seemed to get a lot of comments and a lot of people talking. So if you go to the live section and Matt, if you head back over there, you can see that if you just head to live videos, we're not only curating what we do, but we're curating ones that are here on this remote learning thing that you're doing, Mike. We're doing we're finding other ones that people are doing like the hyperdocs. And so you can find those links there and past ones that we've done. That's Matt. super cool. Yeah, I love this site so far. I've been checking <laughs> it out. We're spending a lot of so, time. A question for you. So what have you been hearing from educators? You know, all this remote and distance learning has been spinning up. What you both are both very connected. What are the top things that you've been hearing from educators right now in terms of what they want, what they need? Assessment. Yeah. OK, yeah. Ready? Yeah, absolutely. I'd say assessment is one. There was there was one that I wanted to touch on really quick that I can I can show you a little bit on um, on the on the site. Um, one of the big things I've heard a lot about is the importance of making connections with the students because you know obviously we we aren't seeing each other face to face in the same way that we had before, um, and. You know that that whole idea of isolation is really really starting to to settle in, and you know the students. The, a big part of school for them, obviously, is getting to see their classmates and their friends. But another big part of school also is getting to see and talk to their teacher. And so we've done an awful lot recently about making connections. You know, trying to strengthen those connections that um, the teacher has with the students, but also what the students have with each other. In fact last week which was um our very first uh last week we had our very first of our big idea series and that big idea this is this week's but the one before was this one and this one was asking what do kids need right now like what do they need from their teachers and one of the big things that we talked about the most when it came to this was that connection you know those um those relationships and so Basically, what we did was we took this idea of what do students need and we started to unpack it. And with each one of these five things, and Holly and I have said, you know, there are lots and lots of things that students need from us. These are just the five that we picked out that we that we thought we needed to talk about. And so with each one of these, we did a deep dive into, into each one talking about what does that look like? And so, for instance, with the connection piece, um, we created this, um, we created this infographic, uh, 10 fun ways to connect with students. And so we've got a, a variety of different things inside of this, including, you know, like with Flipgrid playing a would you rather game or with Seesaw playing a or doing a I used to think and now I think activity. Um, I really like this one down at the bottom. We've got a sway um, that's an that's called act of, acts of kindness tiles. Students create a sway. Um, or a slide collaboration where they share ways that they can show kindness while outside of school. And so you can you can really see here that within these big ideas, we take you know something big, we pull out a couple of things about it, and then we do a deep dive into it. And I've found 
that a lot of educators are talking about this. You know, we've, we've got to make sure that students are okay first. You know, it goes back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's getting some of those baseline fundamental safety and security needs taken care of before we can get up to the higher level. So that's that's one one answer to that question, I think. No, that's great. I love those infographics. So Holly, yeah. you also talked to a lot of educators and you are probably getting maybe new educators who are coming online. They're new to digital tools. Maybe their school district said, hey, we're going online. So what are your tips for teachers who are kind of brand new to this online world? Like you've been hanging out here a long time, but they're all new. <laughs> how, how do you ease them in? Like what do you what do you suggest? One word, Mike, simple. Keep it simple. So right now you need to probably focus on Microsoft Teams and getting to know how you're going to connect with your kids. Get that done. And then um, I'm hearing that teachers are going into what I like to call now phase two. So they phase one, they're learning how do they manage their class in this learning hub. And then in phase two, they're looking around for, OK, I did Teams, what's next? And so we need to prepare as the people helping them, we need to prepare for uh, getting, being there with answers for phase two. And I'm hearing also a lot of people as they do this, they wanna lock people into quizzes and tests. And I saw Nick Provenzano um, say a moment ago on Twitter, if you're asking how, how do I keep kids from cheating on the tests, you're doing it wrong. And so, that's something important that is uh, level two or, or part two is helping teachers rethink what this looks like. So first, Microsoft Teams, get to know it, learn it, connect with your kids. And then as you look around, come to online learning tools and look for those other things that you can start to do. Oh, that's great. I online like that. Ideas, I should get the... Uh, <laughs> What's that? that? Online learning ideas, I should get the name right. Oh, <laughs> um, so here's a question. Both of you know Microsoft. We have a partnership working with both Holly and Matt on this online learning ideas site. And, you know, both of you historically, you know, if we're honest, you, you have not been as deep into the Microsoft end of the pool, maybe as, uh, as other places. But <laughs> now you've been exploring a little bit more. And I'm curious for both of you, what have been the most surprising things that you've learned about Microsoft EDU in the past, you know, six months or so. I'll um, I'll throw one in here that there's so much that's built in into um, you know that's built into Windows already. Um, you know, we've got your you know, your Office products that there's an awful lot that you can do with. Um, you know, for me personally, I think you know OneNote and PowerPoint are two super powerful tools that you can just do a ton of things with. But um, Another another thing that I'm finding is that with Windows, there's a lot of stuff built in where you don't have to go download an app or you don't have to go off to a website to do something because it's all in there. Um, just recently, and actually there's a link out on onlinelearningideas.com right now to this. Um, I just recently outlined sort of a process that you can take to create instructional videos for students that are pretty low in size so that they don't take a ton of data and they don't take a ton of time to load. And um, everything that that I outlined that you would use to create those videos is all built into Windows. So for instance, I talked about if you wanna do a um, screen recording, you can just use the, the Xbox game bar that's already built into oh, yeah. Windows, Absolutely. right? That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so you could do that for a screen recording. And then of course you've got the camera um, app that's already built into Windows anyway. You can use that to record um, your face. And then you can take all of those things and pull them into the video editor, which is already built in. You know, Just type the words video editor into the search bar at the bottom of Windows and it's all right there. And then once you're done with all of that, as you go to export that video file, you can change this, the size of the file, the resolution of the file down to standard definition so that it's smaller and it's it's more accessible to students that don't have fast internet or that are working with you know limited data plans on their um, devices so that's one of the things that I'm really finding that I love is that so much of it is already just built right in you either got to know about it or be able to find it and you know you're off and running yeah that's great 
I'm going to call myself out. In fact, I started to make videos around this because I needed to be called out. So I thought I would just do it <laughs> formally. Um, so I'm making videos around. I've been using Google Docs for a decade and I didn't I haven't looked over at Microsoft Office. And now that I've looked over at Microsoft Word, I see wait, there's a share button. Hold on. There's a comment button. There's all of these things that I, I thought we're probably only in Google Docs, but aren't. And so like you say, Mike, I've been doing thinking of Microsoft in the 2011 Microsoft way. <laughs> so I made these cute little three minute videos around. Hey, I love Google Docs, but guess what? Microsoft has this going too. And I made one last night for PowerPoint, and I think I am convinced that PowerPoint is better. So I know that I'm starting just to go straight to that and I I was telling some people in Maine last night that I work with at a school district and I said morally I kind of feel like I've let my students down because I haven't been using OneNote and I've been all Google with my hat on for Google and I haven't had I haven't um, come over to Microsoft the way I should have and I think I'm personally upset with myself that I didn't have that tool for students and it's something I'm having to like morally deal with actually because it's such a great tool well yeah we've got a purple cape to help you feel better about your morals in the future so you know we'll, we'll work we'll work on that um so so holly since we'll, we'll stick with you just for a moment so there's this new book <laughs> that just came out that we we're hoping you could talk about and actually the i want to share i met holly i think it was a little over a year and a half ago is at flipgrid live out in minneapolis is when holly and i first met in person where we talked more than all of like 10 seconds. And so Justin Chando and myself and Holly were hanging out at Flipgrid and we were talking about pedagogy and we were talking about lots of interesting things and we sort of kept in touch since then and Holly and I have been chatting and now she's got a great book with some of her best educator pals and Holly, why don't you tell us the name of it and what it's about? So I had um, sold the Google Infused Classroom and it was a, it was a good seller and I said, 50% of the world's population or more are using Microsoft tools and they deserve to have infused classrooms as well. And what so we uh, grabbed in some MIEs from Atlanta and the Merrills and together we wrote the Microsoft infused classroom and then in the infused classroom takes a look at pedagogy first. So if you want to do formative assessment, what tools in this Microsoft ecosystem, including and Flipgrid's definitely in the Microsoft ecosystem, but including Seesaw and including some of these other ones that can work well together so that we can do powerful formative assessments. Then the next section looks at differentiation. If I want to differentiate, what should I use? And of course, hello, it's Teams. And then what I'm going to be calling the new hyperdoc because I'm making a ton of hyperdocs in OneNote right now and um, Microsoft Word. Then we look at demonstrations of learning. What tools can we use to show really purposeful learning and then looking at reflection. So we took all of these great infused classroom ideas and around pedagogy and just infuse them with Microsoft tools and it's really selling well right now. So I'm super excited. Yeah, there's a lot of demand out there. There's a <laughs> there's not as many Microsoft education books out there right now and I think yours is one of the first and I think there's a lot of I mean I've got mine sitting right on my desk it just came the other day so uh, I'm I'm started I hope to finish this weekend we'll see now uh, Mr. Miller do you have any books on the horizon or what what's the latest you, you've got a lot of books going on but I don't, I don't know if you've got a latest one or you can't tease anything out or anything to share on that front Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about it. So yeah, I do have something coming out that I'm pretty excited about. Um, if if anybody watching this is familiar with the book Teach Like a Pirate by Dave Burgess, you know, it's all about um, student engagement. He says, don't just teach a lesson, create an experience. And so I'm writing a follow up book to that called Tech Like a Pirate that takes that question um, or takes that statement. Don't just teach a lesson, create an experience. And it asks, can technology help us create memorable learning with our students? And what I've found is the answer is definitely yes. And so I touch on seven different areas that we can 
create those memorable experiences with students. And, you know, several of them work really, really nicely with Microsoft tools. For instance, one of them is global collaboration. And, you know, Skype has been my go-to for that for the longest time. From the time that I was teaching high school Spanish and my class got connected with a class in Valencia, Spain for a couple of months, you know, did Skype calls back and forth, back and forth. Um, that was a memorable experience, you know, in and of itself. Um, we talk, in, or I took, not we, I talk in the book about um, creating images and how whenever you put images and text together, it's very brain friendly. And um, I found that PowerPoint is, among other tools, PowerPoint is a really powerful way to create those images that pull Im uh, that pull pictures and text together. Uh, so anyway, that's on its way. There's a link to a whole bunch of, um, of resources, free resources related to the ideas behind the book that you can find at ditchthattextbook.com slash techlap, T-E-C-H-L-A-P, kind of like tech like a pirate. So um, that is on the horizon. Our, we're shooting for a May 1st release date. So we'll see if that happens. Hopefully it will. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, with large swaths of the country. I just saw today Georgia has canceled school in person for the rest of the school year and I think we'll be seeing more of that. California. I think there's going to be a lot more educators teching like a pirate like right mm -hmm. now. So I think both for the Microsoft Infused Classroom and your upcoming book, there's no demand like the present in terms of a lot of educators having to do a lot of growth mindset, I would say, with figuring this world mm -hmm. out, which is new to many of them. Okay, last question, kind of related to what I just said. A lot of, both of you do a lot of conference presentations and keynoting, yeah. and obviously many conferences are shut down right now or postponed or happening online. So for both of you, what are the best ways people, they still want to connect with you, obviously, are the you know, webinars, Facebook Lives, like what are the types of things people can find to learn more about both uh, Holly, Matt, and online learning ideas? Yeah. Let me um, let me touch on this real fast. I'll go quick and then I'll pass it over to Holly so she can um, she can share with uh, with you some ideas too. Um, I wanted to share with you our um, live videos page over here on um, online learning ideas. This is one place right here where Ooh. if you love the um, you know sort of the face to face feel and the presentation model and you know going to breakout sessions and stuff this is a, a great place to go so um we were talking about this a little bit earlier but holly and i have been scheduling multiple uh live videos um and we'll continue to do that with a wide variety of different educators so for instance oh, see looky here there's the one that we're doing right now right up at the top um uh -huh. but we've got right right we've got um this one I'm I'm really excited about. Um, this is one with um, former Pennsylvania Teacher of the Year Mike Soskel, and he's uh, he's been doing a lot of work around empathy, compassion, and humanity, and he's going to talk about how that fits into the remote learning situation. Um, of course, like Holly was saying earlier, uh, we have Kyle Wagner, who's a uh, a great PBL consultant from Hong Kong that we're going to be talking to related to uh, PBL with remote learning. So this is just sort of scratching the surface, but this is the best place to find some of that. And you can find that at the online learning ideas website under the live videos. So that's that's definitely awesome. one place I would suggest. Yeah, that's a really good one. And Mike, you know this um, uh, on the Infuse Classroom Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Infuse Classroom. Um, we're bringing back EduSlams and you may not know that EduSlams existed and um, it's kind of circa 2012. Uh, they're short little videos of quick information, something you can use in your classroom. Now your classroom's the world um, tomorrow. And so like after I get off here, I'm going to go and do a five minute thing on the new Flipgrid screen recorder, which is like blowing people's minds. So we're trying to put those, yeah. uh, the, yeah. Yeah, those kinds of uh, small, quick bites of stuff that'll get you thinking inside of that Facebook group. And we've had over, um, I. 1700 new members in the last two weeks i think something like this wow. maybe three weeks like a city here you got a little facebook city yeah so that's how for uh the answer to that question great okay well hey both of you thank you so much for joining us today 
and it's the great partnership. I look forward, you know, we'll, we'll be working together quite a bit in the coming months. And I think the demand and the need for the content and the ideas that both of you are putting out there is very strong. So, so thank you so much for everything you're doing for educators out there. And with that, what I'm going to do, I'll have a couple of links for, for the things they were talking about as well. I'm going to reshare my screen. And so give me just a moment here. I'm going to pull up my PowerPoint for the last couple of slides. So the I put the links for today's updates again just to remind people. There is the online learning ideas.com, which is the sites that Matt and Holly were just showing, including the places you can find them in the future, live events, all sorts of pedagogical ideas and a ton of good content. There is the EDU frequent links, which is the great sort of a one link to rule them all for all these new remote learning and AKA links that are coming out. And then Holly's new book, I shouldn't say Holly's, it's many people's, but Holly was representing her new book from Elevate Books, the Microsoft Infused Classroom Book. And there's the, we made a little short link to make it easier to remember. That'll take you right to Amazon if you want to order her book. And then a recap of the same resources we started in the beginning, the Microsoft EDU Remote Learning Site, the Teams EDU Quick Start Guide, and then please sign up for the Microsoft education remote learning community if you're not already there. And then in today's show notes, we'll post the PowerPoint that has all the links in just a little bit and you'll be able to find the link here. We'll post the YouTube video tomorrow and our remote learning playlist. We're getting more and more views out there so you can watch all the previous. I think actually this is our show number, might be show number 10. This might be our hey. lucky 10. And then if you need support, there's the link right there. Any educator that needs support on any of the Microsoft Education products can go there. And lastly, our next couple of webinars. Oops, this is an old slide. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how fast I'm updating slides these days. Well, tomorrow, <laughs> anyways, we've got large scale remote learning at the University of New South Wales with, I like to keep saying, the legendary Dr. Yeah. David Kellerman. And, and our full schedule is right here, the remote learning webinar schedule, where you can get all the latest. On Friday, we've got Ian Mikintel from the Whiteboard team. We'll be talking about Whiteboard in Teams, which is a super yeah. cool app. And other than that, thank you very much. Thank you to Marilyn and Matt and Bryce, our producers, and we will see you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.